Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Sentinel PH, the first ever show in the Philippines talking about the topic of combating wokeness through reason, common sense, and faith. I'm Jay Aruga, host of the Jay Aruga Show. And I am Anthony James Perez of uh, The Man You're Meant to Be. No elementary ako sa Don Bosco, Makati, the Salesians never forgot to remind us almost every day. Remember that you carry that badge in your breast. That badge shows the logo of our school. It means you are Bosconian and you should act like the Bosconian that you are. My mates from my school bus, medyo pasaway sila. Um, they always seem to forget this. Nagdadala ng porn, minsan nagdala pa nga ng baril, minumura yung driver namin, uh, pasaway din uh, towards dun sa mga ibang school buses. For some reason, however, tumatak sa akin ang sinabi ng mga Salesians. They might say, boys will be boys, kaya dapat hayaan na lang silang manggulo. Pero para sa akin, Bosconians should always be Bosconians. Dapat magalang at kagalang-galang. Para sa ating mga Pinoy, nasa nature na yata natin ang hiya, kung tawagin. For example, kapag nasa party ka, minsan sasabihin ka, Uy, mahiya ka naman, ang dami mong kinuhang Shanghai, may kakain pa. Or, mahiya ka naman, ikaw nga itong walang ambag, ikaw pa yung malakas sa pulutan. And sociologists and anthropolog anthropologists can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is deeply ingrained mentality and a, a reflection of our innate sense of a person's dignity. When someone does something that's beneath our stature as persons or as Christians, we often tell that person, Uy, mahiya ka naman. A few, a few days ago, the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith released a declaration called Dignitas Infinita, and it's exactly about human dignity. What it says is that humankind has been given the dignity that comes from being children of God made in his image and likeness. This dignity was elevated when God became man and died on the cross to save us from sin. And we're all called to the fullness of our dignity in heaven by becoming saints. The in innate dignity of every person is called ontological dignity. Ikaw ay may dignidad dahil anak ng Diyos. This dignity is given not at the moment of our birth, but the moment of our conception, which is the moment that we began to have life. No one, not even you, can take away this dignity. The proper use of our freedom is called moral dignity. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay may kakayahan at kalayaan tayong gumawa ng mabuti at naaayon sa ating dignidad bilang mga anak ng Diyos. Pero minsan pasaway tayo. Unlike our ontological dignity, moral dignity can sometimes be lost. For example, kapag binoto mo yung sikat, kahit alam mo namang korap o wala namang gagawin, kapag kinuha mo yung, o kinopia mo ang hindi naman sa'yo dahil uh, hindi ka nagkaroon ng maayos na trabaho, kapag nanonood ka ng porn, o nagfa-follow ka sa mga influencers na tinatawag na thirst traps, uh, kapag okay lang sa'yo na may mamamatay sa ngala ng pag-asenso ng bayan, total addict naman yung mga yan, nagkukulang ka sa moral dignity, magbago ka na. Social dignity refers to the quality of our living conditions. Some of us are richer or poorer than others, but the question is, do our living conditions reflect the God-given and ontological dignity? For example, yung mga lulong sa kahirapan, nasa kalsada lang nakatira o sa ilalim ng tulay, do they have social dignity? No, it doesn't mean we're judging the poor. Rather, it, we should be asking, what are we doing to help them? For example, yung mga kapatid natin mga badyaw na sumasampa sa jeep at nag-aabot ng sobre para manlimos. Kadalasan, tinatawanan pa nga natin. At best, hindi pinapansin. And this apathy towards them is not only reflected on us, but on our politicians. Alam nila yung nangyayari, they know what's going on. Why are they not doing anything about it? Finally, the declaration speaks of existential dignity. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay may situation sa buhay na hindi ka nagkulang sa essentials, pero kulang ka sa peace of mind and fulfillment. It could be because dahil may sakit ka, dahil sa mga addiction sa drugs, sugal at porn, may mga matitinding away at sigalot sa pamilya that leads to broken families. Lahat ng mga yan ay labag sa dignidad natin bilang mga tao at mga anak ng Diyos. 
And personally, I am happy that the church, through the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith, came up with this declaration. Dignitas Infinita proves that while the church is in this world, it's not of this world. This world can easily bestow and take away a person's moral, social, and existential dignity through its many ideological, ideological beliefs. The history of mankind is replete with examples of kings, emperors, tyrants, and governments disrespecting and disregarding the ontological and innate dignity of mankind. To this, the church stands proud and defiant very much against the ways of the world and fights for the truth that man has forgotten, that men and women are born in the image and likeness of God. The Sentinel PH is committed to fight woke ideology, and tonight we will discuss Dignitas Infinita and its relation to progressive and woke values that are being pushed nowadays. With that said, when you read Dignitas Infinita, there are sections here that I think our liberal friends would appreciate, like the opposition to death penalty, the section about poverty, immigration, and war. The best way to explain it is that the church does not adhere to ideologies of the left and the right, or even libertarianism versus authoritarianism. She adheres to the truth. Now let's start with how Dignitas Infinita tackled the issue of human trafficking. This is the main subject of the hit film, Sound of Freedom. And this is why the Jeffrey Epstein issue is so vile. Kung totoo man na maraming high-profile people who are engaged in the child sex trade. Here's what Dignitas Infinita say about human trafficking. The church and humanity must not cease fighting against such phenomena as the marketing of human organs and tissues, the sexual exploitation of boys and girls, slave labor, including prostitution, drug and weapon trade, weapons trade, terrorism, and international organized crime. Trafficking profoundly disfigures the humanity of the victim, offending his or her freedom and dignity. Yet at the same time, it dehumanizes those who carry it out. Ang sakit-sakit para sa isang tatay o nanay, biological parent ka man o hindi, na maging biktima ang anak mo ng human trafficking. Hindi mo alam kung saan na siya napunta, kung anong kahayupan ang ginagawa nila sa kanya, no parent or child should ever have to go through that. And yet, human trafficking is a rapidly growing industry, surpassing all the number of slaves in previous history. There's no dignity in human trafficking. And allegedly, may organ harvesting na din daw na nangyayari sa Pilipinas. The next section after this is abortion. And this is the most heartbreaking part of the document. Let me read the highlights. Today, in many people's consciousness, conscience says, the perception of its gravity has become progressively obscured. The acceptance of abortion in the popular mind, in behavior, and even in law itself is a telling sign of an extremely dangerous crisis of the moral sense, which is becoming more and more incapable of distinguishing between good and evil, even when the fundamental right to life is at stake. Which is akmang-akma sa mga nangyayari ngayon. Dahil dapat by now, pansin nyo na, na sobrang lalana ng mga advocates for abortion, lalo na mga feminist lately, na parang hindi na alam ang tama at mali. At tinuturuan pa ang iba na abortion, ang abortion ay parte ng sexual freedom ng isang babae. Freedom to take an innocent baby's life? Where's the dignity in that? And the mere fact that they call this procedure by euphemisms like termination of pregnancy or being pro-choice means they want to hide the true abhorrent nature of abortion. Sinasabi rin sa document na kung yung pinaka-defenseless at inosente, kaya nating patayin. Ano pang human rights ang kaya nating bawiin sa kapwa natin? Next is this. Ito yung sabi ng document and hula niyo kung anong tinutukoy dito. There is a special case of human dignity violation that is quieter but is swiftly gaining ground. It is unique in how it utilizes a mistaken understanding of human dignity to turn the concept of dignity against life itself. 
Okay, hulaan niyo kung ano yung tinutukoy ng dignitas infinita na violation sa section na ito that's swiftly gaining ground. Yes, it's euthanasia or assisted suicide or ang sumisikat na term niya ngayon na made medical assistance in dying. Recently lang, they permitted assisted suicide in many parts of the world. They started this for the terminally ill. Then countries like the Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, Luxembourg, Switzerland allowed it for mental disorders, which could be very subjective. It's even starting a business. May mga maid clinics na nagpapaparty para sa mga nagpapa-assisted suicide for living this life. Recently, we heard the news of a 28-year-old girl who's scheduled to be killed in May. And let's pray for her. There's no dignity in taking one's own life. Of course, for me, the highlight of the document is gender theory. Sabi ng document, Regrettably, in recent decades, attempts have been made to introduce new rights that are neither fully consistent with those originally defined nor always acceptable. They have led to instances of ideological colonization in which gender theory plays a central role. The latter is extremely dangerous since it cancels differences in its claim to make everyone equal. Ang tinutukoy dito that are may, may ginawang new rights na inestablish ang UN which proliferates gender ideology. And mapapansin nyo, inulit na naman dito ang pagtawag sa gender theory as the most dangerous ideological colonization a thing na ilang beses na sinasabi ng Santo Papa. But this time, it was put on paper. This is a mon monumental document right here because I don't think the Vatican has issued a document against gender theory in the past. Kaya highly appreciated itong release na ito. The most quotable quote on gender theory for me is this. Desiring a personal self-determination as gender theory prescribes apart from the fundamental truth that human life is a gift, amounts to a concession to the age-old temptation to make oneself God, entering into competition with the true God of love revealed to us in the gospel. Then right on cue, the document talked about sex change. The thing is, while you can have your sex organs change in appearance, it is impossible to change your sex. It is embedded in our very DNA. Kaya there really is no such thing as sex change. But for the sake of conveying a thought, I guess Dignitas Infinita used the term. It's actually better than the politically correct term gender-affirming care. According to the document, such a truth deserves to be remembered, especially when it comes to sex change, for humans are inseparably composed of both body and soul. There's no dignity in teaching that men can be women, or vice versa. Human rights are based on the fact that we are all bestowed with the dignity of being God's children. We as Christians, or as decent human beings, must recognize the dignity of all people if we want to fight for their human rights. Basahin natin ang document. Let's promote it to fellow Catholics at pagnilayan po natin ito. It's a gift from the Church's Magisterium and a spiritual weapon to help us fight these different violations on human dignity. All right. AJ, sta. Yeah, um well, you know, I sabihin ko eh. Um mabigat pero malaman, no? Ma hindi hindi siya mabigat dahil napaka um academic niya. Actually, ang, mm. ang napansin ko habang binabasa ko siya, and to be fair, hindi ko pa siya tapos basahin. Mm. Kasi ayokong basahin ang Dignitas Infinita na parang, ay, binabasa ko lang, yeah, yeah, okay naman pala to, okay, you know, to parang agree ako dito, ganyan. Mm. Um, pinagnilayan ko talaga siya, and um, this is something that we really needed sa, sa panahong ito. No? And katulad na sinabi mo, I have this appreciation for the doctrine of faith. Kasi this is very timely, no? Um, tayo nga yung nagsasabi na parang bakit hindi nagsasala tayong simbahan pagdating dito, no? Although, mm -hmm. alam naman natin may, may particular na turo ang simbahan. We were waiting for something like this and, and this came out, no? And patuloy ko pa siyang binabata. Yeah. yeah we're, 
we we only scratch the surface dito sa document ito. Obviously, right. and dami pang mga violations on human dignity that we haven't discussed kanina. There's surrogacy, then meron pa dun sa digital stuff like yung bullying sa internet. Yun yung pinaka dulo. There's a mm-hmm. violation on dignity as well on that one. Then for the people with disability, the, yun nga yung war and etc etc. We're just scratching the surface. Ang mga pinili lang natin talaga dito is yung mga may kinalaman sa pinaglalaban natin on woke ideology yes. ba. Ayun. And alam ko ano alam ko ang talagang gusto mong pagtuunan ng pansin diyan ay yung gender ideology. Ano? Oh yeah. And yeah. In, in a way yes. Pero gusto ko muna mag-start sa ano sa human trafficking. Okay. Kasi I don't know if you guys have heard if our audiences have heard that the Philippines is if not one of the capitals but the human trafficking cap uh, tra- trafficking capital of the world and dakakalungkot yon no kasi you know ta- tayo mm-hmm. very family oriented tayo uh, we would like to think of our children as blessings and yet many of us um, you know a lot of us are actually involved in trafficking our own children now l- let me discuss this uh, statistic from the Online Sexual Abuse and Exploitation of Children uh, Organization, uh, OSAEC. No, no uh, they have this statistic from January, 9th, uh, January to December 2019 and the next year, January to December 2020. Uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children reported a 200% nine increase from 2019 to 2020 in cyber tip reports tips pa lang yun ah hmm. I- iba pa yung hindi na tip so from 418,422 cyber tips noong 2019 hulaan mo kung ilan yung na-report na tip the next year the next it's the next year kung a thousand kaya or one so, sobra million thousand Woo. Million, two hundred ninety-four thousand seven hundred fifty cyber tips, from four hundred thousand to almost one point three million. No, mm. so I, I think it has twenty twenty yung pandemic, de ba? Twenty twenty, correct. Yeah, I think it has something to do with uh, the rise of pornography, nung lalo na nung pandemic. Oh, oh simply, uh, laganap naman talaga yung oh. pornography ever since. Pero nung twenty 2020, dahil nasa bahay lang tayo, no, uh, maraming nanonood ng porn kayo ha. Um, and unfortunately, mm-hmm. marami din ang mga nag-traffic ng sariling mga pamilya, sariling mga anak. No? Kasi easy money. Eh, no? uh, mm-hmm. Ang, ang pinaka nag daw dito, unfortunately, yung mga magulang. Mm-hmm. Sadly. It's very unthinkable. Sadly. Very unthinkable na igugro mo yung sarili mong anak for what ang 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 price range daw nila is somewhere between 150 the the usual mm-hmm. 150 to 3000 pesos per show mm-hmm. sa halaga ng 3000 oh. pesos um sinira mo buhay ng anak mo so, this is very disturbing for us Filipinos kasi nagiging human trafficking capital of the world tayo so uh, i really think that Dignitas Infinita really came out with this para magkaroon tayo ng guidance not that we uh, you know uh, we were confused about this no, alam naman nating mali pero I'm glad that the church has spoken about this yeah. and itong human trafficking dapat ito yung issue that the left and the right could unite both. sana di ba yes. both sana yes. but, but I, I hope our friends from the other I, I consider myself conservative. I hope yung mga nasa left would help us as well on fighting this. And and sadly, may iba kapag you bring up the human trafficking issue, sasabihan ka na QAnon conspiracies. Hindi ko sure kung familiar no. yung mga tao doon. So may tinatawag na QAnon conspiracy na ito daw yung focus yung human trafficking. But Sana mamulat yung mga 
kaibigan natin from the other side of the aisle that this is something that we could unite on dahil syempre I'm I know they have compassion for those na nasa laylayan at itong mga bata na ito is definitely sila yung pinaka isa sa pinaka defenseless na mga tao and you mentioned yung Pilipinas if you know anything about it please ilapit nyo sa authorities dahil it's surprising uh, yung sinabi mo that we're one of the capitals ng human trafficking sa buong mundo. Yes. All right. Okay, let's read some comments. So sabi ni sabi Lorenzo, ni Lorenzo I... yes, okay, as the film so, The Sound of Freedom insists, God's children are not for sale. Ang ganda, ang gandang uh, quote. Yan nakakilabot yung quote na yun, ano. Especially uh, with the delivery of uh, si Jim Camisa. Ang goosebumps. Mm. Yeah. Uh, nakaka, nakakatuwa at nakakaiyak. Okay. Yeah, just send in your comments, guys, dito sa sa stream natin. Then we'll read it in a bit. Okay. Uh, ayan, aside from that, yun nga, yung gender theory, I've been waiting for it kasi binibigyan na tayo ng teaser a few months back that itong document na ito would come out and maga, it will speak on gender theory and surrogacy. And ito nga yes. nakuha na natin. Uh, um, just for the sake, sorry, just for the sake of our audience, ano ba yung gender theory? Uh, in sa madaling sabi, it's just the theory that sex, biological sex is uh, malleable. So ibig sabihin, uh, kahit na pinanganak kang babae o lalaki, uh, it means na pwede pa rin i-shape ng environment mo especially magulang mo or family mo or even sarili mo, yung magiging uh, gender mo, yung gender expression na sinasabi at kung uh, you are actually free to be attracted uh, to anyone you like, whether uh, lalaki o babae. So that's the easy way of understanding what gender mm -hmm. theory is. And ang straight to the point ng sinabi ng document that those who adhere to this gender theory is treating themselves as gods. And ito yung pinakaunang temptation ng serpent kay Adan mm -hmm. at kay Eva dun pa lang sa the Garden of Eden wherein yes. no, si, si, si Lord, si God, sinabihan tayo that man, women, He created them. Sa Genesis pa lang sinabi yes. niya na man, women, He created them. And then pumasok si Sir, tinempt si Adan at si Eva Sabi niya, pag kinain yung prutas na yan, you will be gods. And ito na nga yung nangyayari sa gender theory. We're trying to and make ourselves gods. That is what pride is all about. No? Um, very ironic that our brothers and sisters from the LGBT call it the, call themselves the pride event yung tuwing June. No? At ito rin mm -hmm. ang sinulat ko sa aking libro, The Man You're Meant to Be. No? Bili na kayo, nasa Shopee. No? Mm -hmm. um, uh, katulad ng sinabi mo, um, by Adam and Eve eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge, no? sinasabi nila, and they gave into the temptation of, hey, I want to be like God. And pride is uh, exactly like that. No? May sinabi si God na isa, pero ang susundin ko yung sa sarili ko. No? I want to be like God. Yun yung pinaka-temptation of pride na sinasabi. And this is the temptation of gender theory, that God has given me something, but I want something else. Hmm. Yeah, let's read the other comment by si Lorenzo. Lorenzo, salamat sa mga comments nyo. Comment mo. Mm -hmm. sabi, niya, sabi dito si Dr. John Money, the father of gender theory, should have his license revoked and charged as a sex offender. So, so Along uh, with Alfred Kinsey. Along with Alfred oh, yeah, Kinsey. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. yung tinatawag na parang father of uh, sexology ba yung mm. kanyang uh, mm. <laughs> branch of so, science. <laughs> yes. So sa mga hindi nakakilala, si Alfred Kinsey is yung nag gumawa ng study and nagsasabi na ang mga bata pa lang daw is a sexual uh, people Beings na daw. Na. Sexual yeah. being na. As bata pa lang daw. 
Pero ang ginawa pala niya is nag-survey siya and karamihan sa mga sinurvey niya din is yung mga nasa sex offender sa preso. Kaya medyo skewed yung mga report ni studies. Alfred Kinsey, studies niya. Pero isa ito sa ginagamit na parang Bible ng ng mga nasa sex positive movement, yung Kinsey report niya na tinatawag. Uh-huh. And si John Money naman, siya yung nag-experiment sa Rimmer Twins. He wanted to prove that gender is malleable. And ang Rimmer Twins, sa mga hindi nakakilala, just to give you a quick overview, dalawang batang lalaki ito, pero dahil sa nabotch yung circumcision ng isa, lumapit yung magulang kay John Money. Sabi ni John Money, gawin na lang nating babae. Palaki na lang nating babae yung isang twin na yan. And since then, karam- maraming kamalasan na nangyari. And itong pinalaki niya na babae, hindi natanggal sa kanya yung nature ng pagiging, Nung pagiging, lalaki, pagiging yeah. lalaki. Dahil tataka siya para, bakit gusto ko pa rin umihi ng nakatayo? Bakit gusto ko yung mga boy stuff? Until nung lumaki siya, inamin sa kanya ng parents niya na lalaki ka talaga. And eventually, it ended in tragedy because itong dalawang twins na to, one of them committed suicide and the other one died of overdose. Yeah. Ayun. So that's the quick story of John Money. Okay. Ang nakalungkot yun, ano? Kasi ano eh, uh, buong buhay niya, confused siya. Kung mm-hmm. Imaginin mo yun. Imagine yeah, man. buong buhay niya confused siya and at the same time um, his life did not end well. In fact, you know, uh, he unalived himself kung totoo um, mm-hmm. And ito yung naging biktima, unang biktima ng gender theory. So, may he rest in peace. No? Yung naka masasabi ko doon. Alright, may may parang bagong gimmick tayo, AJ. Yeah, uh, parang naman maiba. No? Parang maiba. Uh, we, we call this, yeah, we call this a uh, woke trivia, no? Kasi, okay, uh, sige nga. There, there are ways to learn about wokeism and there are fun ways to learn about wokeism. So, uh, we decided na hindi lang tayo puro dada dito no hindi lang tayo puro lecture na para na, ano let, let's insert something fun so basically what this uh, trivia game is is we, we're, we're just uh, presenting uh, something no uh, may, may tanong sasagutin namin ni Jay ang ating mm-hmm. producer at director na si minamahal kong Apple K ang nag uh, ang nagprepare nito nito mga questions and wala na akong idea no, so, okay. tingnan okay. natin, uh, it- itetest ng director natin yung uh, woke knowledge ng hosts ng Sentinel PH. Okay. Kukunin ko lang yung aking papel at yung aking posibling, marker. So, posibleng maging zero ang score ko dito, pero tingnan natin. Uh, t- <laughs> Let's try. Kasi inakabahan din ako dyan. Eh. <laughs> inakabahan ako. Okay, so, sa mga nasa comments, try nyo ring mag-join. Hindi namin babasahin. Ako hindi ko babasahin. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, tali rin kayo, tali rin kayo. Um, tali rin kayo. Babasahin natin yung comments after nung ano, after nung after. na-reveal yung tamang sagot. Okay, okay, sige. okay. Go ahead. Sige. Uh, take away, Apple. Yeah. So the first question, I think the greatest thing in the world is bringing children into the world to have the disease from their parents. <laughs> they have no chance in the world to be a human being practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they're born. That to me is the greatest sin that people can commit. Guess who Ooh. said this quote? Hear up naman. Ang hula na lang ako. Hindi ko alam. Yeah, yeah. Um, hindi na tayo mag-timer, no? Kasi matatakpan yung buong screen na na-realize. Oh, sige, really. sige. Okay. Game, game. Uh, yeah, game. Okay, ito hula lang to. Hindi ko lang kung tama. One, two, three, go. Kita ba yung aking sabot? And the answer is, pakireveal? 
Yeah, Uy, tama. Galing, mas magaling ka. <laughs> the, yung sa Planned Parenthood, siyang yeah, so nag... This is the Planned Parenthood founder. No, founder bilang nyo, Parenthood. ganyan ka... Uh, hindi, kasi nagsimula ako sa pro-life. Galing. Uh, so, oh, okay. I should be aware of that. So, si Margaret Sanger yan, ah. she's very racist. She is a eugenicist. Kung alam niyo yung eugenics, it, mm. uh, it is... Uh, the breeding of people para matanggal yung kanilang mga unwanted uh, DNA, ang, unwanted parts. Ang strategy ko dito, puro Karl Marx na lang sasagutin ko. Tas, <laughs> sa, <laughs> tumama ako eventually. Tumama mo, tumama. Okay. okay. Next question here. Na, direct. Take it away. Name this person. Okay, ah. dali naman ito. So, madali lang ito. Okay. Ay, teka, basahin natin yung, ano, yung comment. May, May tumama. May quote ba siya? Ka. Name this person? Uh, name this person, wala. Ano lang. Uh, okay. Madali, madali lang ito. Okay. So, salamat, salamat sa... Okay, game, game. One, two, three. Okay. So, Che Guevara. Yeah. And... Okay. Ironically, yung left is iniidolo ito, pero gusto niyang He's papatay very... ang mga LGBTQ+. He's very homophobic. He's yeah. very homophobic. He is very homophobic, but not just because he is uh, innately homophobic. It's just that Fidel Castro, yung boss niya, is also homophobic. Ganun lang talaga yung regime nila. No? Okay, so 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. So, uh, okay. next, ano, next time, pag nagkaroon tayo ng how budget, how meron tayong ano, scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Ang mga audience, right. kumusta? Uh, how are you doing? Okay, next. Ilang tanong ba to? Okay. okay, when was... Uh, ano natin yung format na yan? Ay, may... When was same-sex marriage legalized in the US? May trick question na. Oh, Ito parang hindi ko sure to. Letter na lang isagot natin ha. Okay. Sige. Okay. Hindi ko alam to. Hindi ako sure. Kasi okay. ang, ang lalaki to. Actually, okay, game one, two, three. Actually, letter C. Letter C. So, ano yung tama sa that there? Don't si Kaj. Anong tamang sagot? Ang tamang sagot ay, I think... The correct answer yeah. is letter C. June 26, Oy, 2015. So, tama si Okay, Jay. mali ako. So, to all. To all. Oh, to all. To all. Yeah. Eh, medyo naalala ko yeah. around June yun eh. Around Pride Month. Nagdiwang sila noon nung Pride Month. Yeah. Oh, tama. Si Eman Bueri. Tama siya. All right. Yeah, very good. Um, na- nabatch natin yung, ano, yung tanong tungkol doon kay Gretchen Diaz na napakita sige, natin. Sige. Na. So, let's... Yun na rin ba yung, let's... Yun na rin ba yung tanong or yun na yung sagot sa... Nandun yeah. na rin ba yung Tinan sagot? Natin. Ayun okay. na, na, nakita okay. yung sagot kasi. So, let's keep that question siguro, dear. Okay. Who was that? Pero basahin natin, who was the trans woman? Oh, magandang tanong Ay, sana ito. Oo oh, nga. Would, would Ay, you have known lang yan, his name? ko yan. Ah, okay, okay. Eh, ma- ah, ang actually, ma- naalala ko dyan yung, ano, yung janitress kasi in-interview namin siya. Ah, galing. And papapansin na, natin... Yung mga nagbabalita yes. about Gretchen Diaz, for some reason, yung mga coverage sa kanya, yung pinakamukhang babae talaga siya. <laughs> yun yung linalagay nila sa front page. Yung pinakamukhang babae Gra- talaga siya. Grabe siya. Sorry. Grabe siya. <laughs> <laughs> Pero kung video ang papanoorin nyo, kung video ang mm-hmm. papanoorin nyo, kung na interview siya, makikita mo talaga pa rin na lalaki siya. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Eh, ako ko lang sa inyo ah. pero kung video pa panoorin niyo makikita mo pa rin talaga na lalaki siya pero kung picture ang pinipili nila parate yung pinaka medyo yung angulo na kahit pa paano mukhang babae <laughs> okay go <laughs> uh, next question hopefully uh, this is i think oh madali madali ba si ba, may, may clue na nga eh oh yeah nga di ko lang kung tama kung kung siya ito Pero, okay, ready? Ready ka bro? Uh, okay, game na. 1, 2, one, three, two 3. Yes, yes. I think that I think si Jan Mani yan. Kasi may transgender flag eh. Oh my, kaya nga. Tama yeah, ba? So, Ayun na yan. Clue na pala yan. 
Jan Mania. Mga ilang yes. pictures lang kasi ni Jan Mania akong nakita and kamukha niya. <laughs> Mukhang ano eh, uh, mukha Mal- na, itsura pa lang nakakatakot na yan. <laughs> Oo, oh, talagang parang villain sa isang movie. Talagang, mm, parang Bond villain. Bad scientist. Oh. <laughs> Okay, may, may pa ba? No, Mr. Bond. I want you to die. I think that's it. And, uh, sabi ko <laughs> all right, dear, all tayo. Uh, anong score natin? Three all? Three all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, kamusta so, mga Sentinel uh, PH viewers? How are you tonight? Uh, send us your comments. And nasagot niyo ba yung mga trivia questions natin? Next time, sali kayo. No. Sali uh, kayo. At gawin siguro natin may, may price din yung ating mga ano, mga viewers who Pwede, no? actually win this uh this trivia with us. Oh. So ngayon ay three all tayo. Next time sige. Dear ano. Uh, yung mas mahirap sige. naman. <laughs> Mag-aaral na ako ng ng <laughs> wokeness. But it's it's actually a good idea, no? Um Galing. Kasi kailangan natin aralin yung kanilang mga inaaral at tinuturo sa kanila in order for us to understand it and to have you know intelligent responses to whatever they have to say. No? Uh, clue pa, ulit-ulit lang naman yung sinasabi nila. All right. Yeah, there's really okay. no intelligent conversation there. No? Sige. Hmm. Sige. Yes, siguro for our last uh, portion of our uh, of our show, yung ating uh, usual video reaction. Yeah. Okay. How does that make you feel? Giving a child his freedom. Good. You have been at this for 12 years. My country tis of thee. Why are you doing it? Because God's children are not for sale. It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. For homeland security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. And, and this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. And yet somehow, you have failed to bring me one real world lead. It's over, Tim. Close up and come back home. So you quit your job and you go and rescue those kids. South of that river is all rebel territory. No one goes in. What if this was your daughter? So she's gone. that that's the sound of freedom sound of freedom is one of those films that can legitimately change this world so we want to ignite a fire in audiences and open their eyes to the dark reality of millions of children that need our help Let's make this film a historic event and the start, the end of child trafficking. Theaters across this country are already selling out. Pre-order your tickets today and you can send the message that God's children are no longer for sale. Naiiyak pa rin oh, ako. Oo, oh, oh, grabe. Uh, ang masabi ko lang, quick thing 
last year, pinalad kami, ako, uh, pamilya na makarating sa US around July and August time. And I just, talagang, I made it a point na panoorin ang Sound of Freedom dun sa US dahil nung time na yun, sa US pa lang siya pinalabas. Hindi pa sa Pilipinas. Eventually, sa Pilipinas pinalabas. And I hopefully, hopefully yung mga nasa Pinas ay napanood yung movie na ito. And kung hindi nyo pa napapanood, it's in streaming right now. Available sa, sa Amazon Prime, I guess. You can rent it or or buy it sa buy Amazon. It. Yeah. Okay. AJ? Ang, yung masabi ko lang is kung kung kalahati nung ano, kung kalahati ng mga fans ni Taylor Swift na nood ng Sound of Freedom and nothing hmm. against Taylor Swift. Although hindi naman talaga ako fan. Nothing against their fans. Uh, Swifty ako, ano ko ba, AJ? Pero sige, go ahead. <laughs> Kung kalahati ng Taylor Swift fans na nood ng Sound of Freedom, um, we could have, you know, uh, contributed a lot to Angel Studios, which, you know, uh, produces a lot of quality films. Um, nalungkot lang ako kasi nanood kami ng asawa ko. Hmm. And napakakunti nung nanonood. And we live in a in a society na napaka intent on uh, entertainment distractions uh, while real world issues are going on so nothing against uh, those who are you know mm-hmm. into Taylor Swift or BTS or uh, K-pop pero these are real world uh, things that are happening angel studios uh, made a film about and uh, next time uh, suportahan natin tong mga ganitong classic oh, yeah. films kasi they open our eyes and they op- they present us the reality na minsan ayaw nating tignan pero hindi nawawala okay and that's a wrap for us here tonight i'm j aroga and i am anthony james perez together we will unwoken the filipino people god bless and good night